Matthew, thank you. Absolutely wonderful. Good morning. Welcome and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for joining us this morning for our live streaming worship service. This service will be also available both on our website, Facebook, and YouTube, so it can be viewed later as well. We're also welcoming some for in-person worship this Sunday. I'm Vance Polly, pastor of Sunrise Presbyterian Church. Your worship leaders this morning include Reese Smith, Matthew Parker, Heidi, and Kent Kenyon. The bulletin for this morning is on the website and in the in email that many of you received on Friday. The bulletin is an aid to worship. It is not essential or necessary for full participation in the service. You're invited to text in prayer requests at the time of the ministry of prayer that follows the sermon. You may text the prayer request using the phone number that is in front of me, 843-437-4239. We are now about to enter into the season of Lent. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and it's a different Ash Wednesday, or the celebration of it is different. We're going to offer you the opportunity to participate in it at your own time. About 7 a.m., the service will be posted online, and you may then participate at any point during the day. Ashes are available for those who are here for in-person worship. You may pick a small packet up. Some of you have requested ashes and they've been mailed to you. If you haven't requested them and you still need ashes, please just call the church's main number and leave a request. Hannah will pick that request up, be in touch with you, and we'll work out a way for you to pick up the ashes. Um, I want to offer a special thank you to a member of the congregation who participated in preparing the ashes and all I can say is we are in good stead for, the joke was, how about a couple of years? I'm saying let's try a decade or more, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You will note both online as well as here that we have an opportunity that we will be emphasizing during Lent. And the opportunity is to begin the process of replacing the hymnals in the pews. As part of the pandemic, all the hymnals and the Bibles were remo removed from the pews. They're, the hymnals are over 30 years old and show the wear and tear of time. There's a new Presbyterian hymnal that's now available. It's been available since 2013. And so the opportunity is for those who are interested to make a donation, and you may make that in honor of someone or in memory of someone. The replacement of the hymnals are being also spearheaded by Carolyn and Neil Anderson, and so they're ensuring that all the replacement of the hymnals will take place, but you have an opportunity, if you wish, to make a dedication, and that will be recognized, will be acknowledged in the front cover of the hymnal. Technology does make it possible for us, even when physically distanced, to still be a community of faith, for us to worship together in real time. Friends, may we greet one another in spirit. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. God's 
It is good to be here, worshiping our Lord. His light transfigures our existence. And also with you. again. All right, we'll try again. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all in our life that brings us peace. All those things with which you surround us, whether it is the beauty of music composed by Chopin, whether it is the warm glow coming through the stained glass, whether it is the sound of rain reminding us of your presence, nourishing your creation, the earth in which we live. Lord, as we come together this morning, we ask for that type of peace in our lives. The peace that lets us open ourselves to you. That helps us close out all of those things that would keep us from you. All of our worries, our day-to-day -day cares and stresses that lets us set those things aside. And during this time, lets us truly worship you with an open heart, an open mind, and an open spirit. Lord, be with each of us this morning as we come to you looking to be filled. We pray this in the name of of your Son and our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. As imperfect humans, we come before God confessing the fact that no matter how hard we try, we are not able to live up to the standards that God wants us to live to. This is the opportunity for us to confess our sins and our need for forgiveness. Let us do that now in one voice. Most amazing God, like Jesus' disciples, we confess our uneasiness in the presence of your Son's unveiled splendor. In the light of the transfiguration, we see that too often we have not taken time for attentive silence. We also need to confess those times when we become so absorbed in our inner thoughts that we lose sight of the needs of the world. As Jesus led the way by descending to the valley to work among the poor, free us to love and serve you in equal measure. Brothers and sisters, the news is good. God is good. God is love. And through God, we are forgiven. Amen.
you may have detected that uh, this is Transfiguration of the Lord Sunday. And so on this Sunday, we recognize some very profound experiences of encounter with God on a mountaintop. One of the traditional passages for Transfiguration of the Lord Sunday is to remember Elijah's experience on the mountaintop when he fled for his life and he is hidden in a cave on a mountaintop. It's from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind was an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. The Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood at the entrance of the cave, then there came a voice to him that said, what, how, what are you doing here, Elijah? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Gospel of Matthew, the Transfiguration of the Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. Now I invite you now to listen to the details of the Transfiguration. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up. Do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We're going to reflect on those two passages of Scripture in the light of what they tell us in the midst of a turbulent experience, how there is peace and calm. What I'd like you to consider and hold in your mind is this image. That the peace and calm that is being shown to us in both of those events is not about detachment. It's not about stepping away from life, but it's about fully engaging from a different perspective. And it is that perspective, that inner calm, that I'd like us to to think about, to consider, to find ways to embrace. If it's easier for you to think of it as a stillness, please, or as an inner peace, but I like the word calm because it describes not just a feeling, but a state of being. First and foremost, I believe it's the calming of the mind and how we find that calm and that peace. One of the wonderful joys of the location of Sunrise Presbyterian, for those who are participating online, go to your mind's eye and recall the views from the sanctuary windows. Even on a rainy, overcast Sunday, there is still this sense of a calm and a peace that comes from a broader perspective. So I'd like us to start first and foremost with broadening our perspective, recognizing that it's so easy to get caught up in the emotions and the stress and the tension of the moment and seeing it only right next to us. How many people who live here in the low country choose at some key moment a time they really need to find some peace and calm, they come out and take a walk on the beach. Come on, I can see some people nodding here because they know exactly what that does. There is something about getting away from all the details, the activity of your life, and simply taking a walk on the beach. And what is it that you experience? When you're walking on the beach, you look out over the ocean to the horizon. Your perspective is indeed broadened. It opens up. And there's something else that occurs. You are put in perspective. Each of us are just a small part of the world. We're just a small part of the lives of the people around us. We may be a very important part but we have that peace and there are other pieces. And we're reminded when we walk the beach that we again are part of something much larger than ourselves. To me, that brings a sense of perspective that helps me to calm my frustrations, to find an inner peace. There's a lot of incoming news, noise, activity around us. If we get caught up in so many details of our lives, we miss the larger picture. How often do we go through, not just a day or a week or a month, but a year and, um, I'm afraid to say, decades, and look back and say, where on earth did that time go? Because we're caught up in each moment, in sequence, rather than acknowledging and recognizing that there's purpose and there's meaning to the larger picture of our lives. Back to the scriptures. If you're not familiar with the journey of Elijah, he was standing strong as a prophet, speaking truth to power. And needless to say, it was not appreciated and he was fleeing for his life, and he knew he was fleeing for his life. If he had remained down in the kingdom, 
he would be killed. And so it's up on that mountain that he's seeking refuge and safety and security. But he's also seeking purpose. Because he's been called by God to be a messenger. And he's not really sure what he's supposed to do. Is he supposed to just give his life? So, on that mountain we hear and see the ways in which the forces of nature shake the world. And there's a purpose behind. Was it in the great wind? Was it in the earthquake? Was it in the fire? I don't think there's any coincidence that a silence descended. In some translation, it's sheer silence. And in that quiet, Elijah's asked a question. It's a heart of the peace that I'm asking you to consider. What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah's withdrawn, detached, distanced himself from the world around him. And the question before him is, as a messenger of God, as a prophet, what are you doing up here, away from everything that's happening down in the kingdom? And the following verses are a commissioning, a recommissioning of Elijah, who then returns to his mission. Well, what's interesting here is the connection with the transfiguration of the Lord. It is easy for us to look as a, at a, as a confirmation of who Jesus is. And you can hear in that language, let's walk through those details again, because I think they jump off the page. And I'm hoping that as I lift them up to you, you'll go, oh yes, and see the connection. When Jesus is transfigured, what is one of the things said? His face shone like the sun. Where else did you hear that? That's not a rhetorical question. I don't have a lot of people here, but yeah, Reese is coming to the rescue and saying, Moses, coming down from Mount Sinai, from the presence of God, his face shone. It glowed. Jesus' face shone like the sun, transfigured in the presence of God. And his clothes were dazzling white, so bright you couldn't look at them. Then suddenly there appeared with him Moses and Elijah. And I've said this multiple times. I think everyone sitting in the sanctuary right now have heard me say this at least two or three times. And that is that a question was asked of me many years ago. So how did the disciples know it was Moses and Elijah? And the answer to it is, and you've just heard it in the scriptures, it couldn't be anyone else. If his face is shining and he's been in the presence of God and there's someone standing there, it's a short list. Moses and Elijah. And so, Peter understands this is a remarkable moment. This is a moment to embrace, to hold on to, to hang on to. And so the question is not only one of honor, but it's also one of staying put. Should we build these shelters for you? Should we build booths that each of you may remain here? Not only is it a sacred expression, it's stay here. And the incredible part of this is what Jesus says to them once that moment has passed. No. We're going back down into the valley. And that's what we're going to talk about now. But before we finish that moment, the transfiguration, I want you to hear again the words that the disciples heard as a blessing of Jesus. And remember, very similar words were used at the baptism of Jesus. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. So as I mentioned, Part of that inner calm is how to be present in all the craziness of your life and have that inner calm and peace. How do we do that? 
Some people do advocate you need to detach, to step away, to live an intentionally quieter life, one that doesn't have to deal with all the busyness and the ruckus of life. But that's not a reality. No, that's not something that is an option for most people, nor should it be. The key here is the inner to the outer. And to recognize what begins within you is now going to radiate to others. Inner calm. How many people have ever had that experience of just simply being at peace? just to be able to exhale. There's a physicality to it. We don't do it often enough. But if you want to encourage that sensation, try those three deep breaths. Fill your lungs, hold for a moment, and then exhale. Try it three times, and your body is going to begin to communicate with you. That's one of the reasons why we're told to count to some number when we're ready to react. I'm looking at some parents that probably have to do that at times. It might be to three. It might be to five. It might be to ten and maybe twenty sometimes. There's a peace and calm. I, I, I'm reminded of how important that counting and taking time can be. And I'm going to take a moment to share Thankfully, a story that's humorous from my childhood. Parents had a very strong coffee table of solid walnut that had been made for them. And they recognized that if you've got toddlers in the room, they're going to begin to ding it and, make them, and it can be refinished. So they let all of that happen until my sister and I got old enough that it was time it could be refinished, which it was. It was back in the room by the grace of God my grandmother was there I was a rambunctious I don't know five six year old my sister did something that annoyed me I picked up the little cane chair that I had and I hurled it at her thankfully it didn't get anywhere near her it did get the coffee table my mother was getting ready to go ballistic I still remember my grandmother was very petite sitting there and saying, Jackie, take a breath. Jackie. And then looked at me and said, you want to go upstairs? And then just simply calm down. I mean, that was the, all I needed was that motion. There's some songs that talk about that. Give me three steps. I mean, I just needed that moment to fly up the stairs and all. And she talked my mother down, who said, it just got refinished. She said, it can be refinished. I'm going to guess my grandparents took care of the next refinishing. But any event, a moment to calm and to collect oneself. Perspective and embracing that calm that needs to be there, even when things go nuts around you. So friends, as we enter into the season of Lent, it's an intentional time to practice calm. Not just to simply carve out time. Last week I spoke about attention. It's about actually making it part of your life. To approach what happens around you with a perspective, with a peacefulness and a calm. Because if you use that, that is if you embrace it within yourself, it changes the way you interact. And it changes the world around you. I want to leave you with this image. I want you to think of concentric circles. Because we do see the world from our own perspective. It's very hard to step out of ourselves. So as you see the world around you and the people around you, recognize that when you adopt an inner calm and peace, that moves out around you. That touches the people you're in contact with. They can feel that calmness. 
and that might affect them. And then think what happens from there. Each of them are concentric circles. And each of them. And look at how it increases. That is the purpose of the inner calm and peace. Not about disconnecting, but about truly and fully connecting with the world and the people around you in a way that is meaningful and that makes a difference. Amen.
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. I'm already receiving the names of the some people that we'll be lifting up in prayer for those who are here in in-person worship. You too will have that opportunity to voice names. Uh, and then as always, they can be lifted from the silence of our hearts. Let us bow together in prayer. Most holy and gracious God, silence in us any voice but your own. Open us to those deep reservoirs of peace and calm that flow from you. Surround us with the love that holds us secure, that reminds us that wherever we go, we are not on our own, but we are held securely by your most loving arms. Remind us that there is nothing we face that we face on our own. You are always present. Your love and grace infuse our lives with well-being and health, and you provide to those you place in our lives, those who care for us, those who support us, those who nurture us, those who protect us, those who heal us. Our prayers reach out to each and every individual that makes that difference in our own lives. And we offer a prayer of gratitude. We add to these prayers, prayers for people close to us, to loved ones, to those in special need of your care and support. We lift to you, Mitch, Allison, Sewell, Marilyn, Brad, Jeff, Heather, Sheila, Noah. Lord, we ask an extra measure of your care, comfort, concern for those names that have been spoken, for those who've been lifted to you from the silence of our hearts, for those who out the world are in need of special support and care. For we trust in you in each and every moment and know that your love and mercy and grace will always sustain us. For we offer this prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, the opportunity to both rededicate our lives in service to the risen Lord, to support His work in the world, is now possible in a variety of ways. Here physically, we can continue our worship of God presenting our gifts and offerings. Mail is always available to mail it to the church or online. In all cases, it is part of supporting the ministry and mission of the church and is part of our worship of God. Let us continue worshiping God as we present our gifts, our offerings, and our tithes.
Gracious God, we rededicate our lives in service to the risen Lord. Take and use these gifts as tokens of our devotion. Where they go, may your love and grace and comfort go. Use them and use us. For we offer them in the name of the one who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. go with you. May God go behind you to encourage you, beside you, to befriend you, above you, to watch over you, beneath you, to lift you up, within you, to give you the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and always, always before you, to show you the way. Amen. Amen.